In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a portal frame. We'll start out by opening up our section set spreadsheet off the data entry toolbar. Section sets help us group similar members together. So we're going to be using a typical column and a typical beam. So we can just use the one grouping for that section set. So our first grouping will be called column. And we will open up our shape database. So if I click on that, I can see that this shape database opens up. And this is the full AISE wide flange database, uh, including all the other types of shapes as well. We're going to choose wide flange. And we'll start here for our columns. We'll maybe go and use a W12 by uh, maybe a 12 by 14, say OK. And make sure that the type is called column we'll use a material called A992. So we'll scroll down and pick the A992. In order to create a new section set, we just push Enter, and we start again here. So we're going to use the label. This one we'll call a beam. And you can type any label you choose. I'll open up the shape database, and we'll choose a slightly smaller member for our beams. Let's see, we'll choose a, uh, let's do a 10 by 22. Say OK. And we'll go to a beam for the type and that the rest is already remembered. So we can close our section set spreadsheet by cl clicking on the X and then we can start drawing. So we're going to go to draw new members and I'm going to choose from the here from the section set since we just defined them. So I can see I have column. I'm going to start by drawing that column as fully fixed and I'm going to draw point to point and I'm going to say apply and we'll draw that from bottom here from the 00, zero location all the way up and let's click on 14 feet and if you look at the right hand corner of my screen you'll notice that there's a dimension down there so I click on the grid and I right click to get rid of the the drawing there and I'm gonna go all the way over to here and I'm gonna start drawing at 30 feet so a zero location go up again to 14 feet and I click and then I right click just to stop that tool it doesn't drop the pencil so I can still continue to draw except now I want to draw some beams so I'm gonna right click to drop the tool and go back to draw new members and choose beams instead of columns then I'm going to continue by drawing apply and I'll get that tool the pencil tool back again and I click on that top of that column and I'm going to scroll over here let's choose about 15 feet over and I can see in the right corner there it's 18 feet high and then I'm going to scroll back down to the top column and I right click to drop the tool. You can draw on any of these grid intersections so we're using our default drawing grid it allows us to draw on a one foot square here. I'm going to right click and now the next step is to define your boundary conditions. So if you go up and click on the boundary conditions, you can see here you have all free and fix, uh, free for the rotation and the translation, but we're going to use some of these buttons here. We're going to use the fixed button where we see everything turns to reaction and I can say apply and now I can either box that joint there or click on that joint and it allows me to define those boundary conditions. I right click to drop the tool and now I'm going to render this. I click on it once and I see the section sets color coded. We can see that the column is in blue and the beams are in green. I'm going to click on that rendered button one more time and then we're going to look at this in isometric view and I can see that what the shapes of these beams look like and the orientation of them. So I'm going to go back to my XY view and now I'm going to start applying some loads. Before we apply the loads, I want to define them. So I'm going to go to my basic load cases spreadsheet and I'm going to start by defining a dead load with a category of dead load, DL. And we can see from the drop down list, I can choose dead load. And I'm going to use this dead load here as my self weight. So for self weight, you can apply a negative one in the Y gravity, which will apply a downward uh, gravity force for in the Y axis. So if your axis is not Y vertically, you might choose a different uh, dead load direction or self weight direction. I'm also going to define a live load and I'm going to choose the category here to be uh, LL live load and now I'm going to use this, I'm going to apply it as a distributed load. When you apply loads, it's easier to apply loads as a graphical. So I'm going to close that spreadsheet and I'm going to go to the graphical entry here for applying distributed loads and it's allowing me here to define the direction. Uh, the capital Y refers to the global axis, the lo lowercase refers to the local axis of the member. We're going to use a capital Y and we're going to say it's negative pointing down uh, 0.1 kips per running foot and we'll say that that's going into the live load. 
I can apply loads by clicking on the member. So I say apply and then just click on that member and click on the other member and that load is now applied to it. So with the loads being applied to the members, let's put them in combination by opening up the load combination spreadsheet on my data entry toolbar. I open that up and I start this spreadsheet by just clicking and creating a new line and I can type any description I want. I'm going to call this dead load plus live load. I'm going to use P delta and turn that on per code is required. So I'm going to type a Y for yes for turning P delta on. And then I just type in the basic load cases with a factor. So I'm going to do a dead load with, with a factor of one and a live load with a factor of one. It's very important that you put a factor there. If you don't put a factor, it won't actually be applied. So you want to make sure you don't forget to put a, a factor there. Now I'm going to close this and I'm going to go and solve this model. We're ready to solve it. So I'm going to click on solve and choose single load combination and then solve. Now once the solution is present, we get a new toolbar called results. And in here we can see we get joint reactions. Let's open up that. And we can see how much load was applied and where that load went to and versus the nodes N1 and N3. We can also open up our design results if you're in interested in how those members did based on the code. So we can see here for the AISC 14th, we have unity checks pretty low. Um, so we're looking at maybe these members are a little bit undersized or, or excuse me, oversized. So we can maybe bring them down in size. Uh, we also can take a look at member stresses. So we see here all of the stress in each one, one of these members. Um, we are seeing axial, uh, moment, and shear. We can also see it as a force. So we go to our member forces spreadsheet. We can see that we open up our member forces spreadsheet and we get axial and shear in force versus a stress. Another useful tool uh, we can take a look at is the deflection. So there's an icon up here that looks like a deflected shape. If you click on that, you'll start to see what the model looks like as it deflects. And you can also look at your joint deflections, which is useful as the joint is deflecting, or your member deflections. So each one of those.